In this video series, The Complete Beginner's Guide to Blender 5, we're working on this fantastic scene you can see here. And in this particular video, we're working on the materials and building the street. So here's where we got up to last time. And I want to position my characters first and then add the street. I can box select characters like so, or I can actually go to the outliner and let's say I want to select the monster now. I'll minimize the old man and minimize the monster so it's nice and easy to see the collections. And incidentally, I'm noticing I forgot to press the render icon on the old man. That means it won't appear in my renders, so I'll make sure that's ticked just there. And if I wanted to select the monster now, I can press Alt A to deselect all, right click on the monster collection and then select objects. So that's a nice and easy way to do that. So let's move the monster. I'll go to top view and G to grab and move the monster over to this side here, roughly in the center there. It doesn't matter too much. And then I'll select the old man. This time I'll just box select and I've got my 3D cursor as the pivot point. Let's just change that to the medium point so that it doesn't cause any confusion. RZ 180 so that they're around the other way. Just zoom in a touch and make sure they're in the middle as well. So just somewhere around there, nice and close, I would say, something like that. I'll just press Alt A to deselect all and see if the man's eyes are kind of looking at the monster. That looks great. Now you might want to do some adjustments to your monster. Now you can see the size relations. You might want to go in and do some editing if you need to. For example, you might want to select the arms and then I can use the 3D cursor just here, period key for changing my pivot point to the 3D cursor. And maybe I could scale these up, for example, move them out more, move them back more as well. Like they're about to pounce and all sorts of things like that, whatever you choose to do. So you might just want to pause the video here, positioning your two characters and adjusting your monster if you feel you need to. Okay, so let's add in a street and a lamp. So first of all, the street, I'll press Shift A to add, mesh, and then plane. And that obviously adds it where my 3D cursor is. And I had the monster collection selected, so it's added it to that collection. First of all, let's sort out the movement. We can obviously press N to go to our transforms. I can just click and drag and select all these and change that to zero, and that will move it to the world origin. However, if I undo that, I can actually just press Alt G, and that removes any grabbing or movement and puts these to zero and puts it in the middle of the world. You can also do that for Alt S and Alt R for removing any scale or rotation. Now I need to move it to a new collection. So I'll press M and then new collection and then call this street and I'll have all those street objects in this collection and then create. I'll press N to get rid of the side panel and let's just start scaling this up and moving it around. So scale in the Y. Oh, I still have my 3D cursor as the pivot point. So let's press the period key back to medium point, scale in the Y, nice long street there, G then Y, move that across so they're in the middle and scale in the X so it's relatively wide. Then I come across to the side here and add a pavement or a sidewalk, I think you call it in America. Shift A, mesh, cube. I'll scale that in the Z first. So it's nice and flat. Let's go to front view now and move that in position somewhere around there. Top view. And that's a good location there. Scale in the Y and move that up like so. G then Y. Just a little bit more in the Y. And we've got a very simple pavement there. G then Z and I'll move that down just a touch. In fact, let's just scale it in the Z. I think something around about there. It does depend on your location as to how your pavements might look or even if you have pavements. Next, we'll add a street lamp in. But I think that's a good challenge for you to have a go at creating a street lamp. So first of all, make sure you've caught up with me with the road and the pavement and then have a go at making the street lamp yourself. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so I'll have two street lamps. I might change my mind later, but I just want to show you a few things about duplicating. So I'll create one here first, shift A to add, mesh and then cube, scale it right down. So it's quite small there. Zoom in with period key on my numpad. That's again, under the view menu, frame selected. I'll just move that above the floor. So G then Z and move it to the front of the pavement just there. And then into edit mode and select the top face. So three to go to face mode. Well, that's face mode up here. Select the top face, G to grab in the Z. That's the first part just there. Then I'll extrude to this point here, scale down and then extrude up further for the actual lamp itself. That looks good. I think I want to scale this down just a touch. So it slowly tapers into this lamp shape. And what a few people do at this point is if I press R to rotate in the Y, they try and have it coming out like this and then extrude from there sort of thing for a street lamp. But you get this taper and problems there. So I'll undo that. Instead, it's better to extrude and come up slightly and then select this face here and extrude out from there. So I'll just come out as if it's a street lamp like so. And then I'll add a loop cut in. So Control R, left click to set where I want the loop cut and then move it and set the position just there. Then I can go to face mode with three, select this 
this face and this face and scale in the Y and bring that out for a street lamp. And there it is just there. So that's great. Hopefully you got an okay with that and you've got something similar to me. Now I'm going to duplicate this so it's a second street lamp over here. But instead of pressing Shift D, I'm going to press Alt D. Remember under the object menu, we've got duplicate objects with Shift D and duplicate linked with Alt D. I'll show you what that looks like. So with my street lamp selected, I'll press Alt D and then Y straight away and move it across over to here for two street lamps. Now the great thing about linked duplicates is anything I do to this one, apart from general transforms like scale, rotate and moving, anything I do in something like edit mode or adding materials, so in edit mode here, if I press scale and Y, that will change the other one over here. I'll undo that though. I will make it a little bit wider though, so scale in the Y and you can see that's updating on the other one just there. Might be a little bit too wide now, but that looks good there. So that's really helpful if you've got objects that you know need to stay the same, you can do linked duplicates. And when I come to add materials in just a moment, when I add it to this one, it will update on that one. So back into object mode. And the next thing to do then is to do our materials. So first of all, make sure you've caught up with me and you've got a similar scene to what I've got here. Pause the video and catch up if you need to. And then let's go across to the shading workspace. So into the shading workspace. Again, remember you can modify your windows if you want to bring the shader editor down slightly and make the 3D viewport bigger. And I'll zoom into my scene. And remember it puts us straight into material preview mode. So that gives us this bright background and everything looks really bright and white at the moment. So I'll start off with the monster. That's nice and easy. Let's select the torso just here, add a new material and I'll call this black. I'll come to my principal BSDF just here. I'll zoom out just a touch so you can see the principal BSDF a bit clearer there. Change the base color, bring it all the way down, almost to black. I'll give it a little bit of room because I like to do some compositing with my images. And it's helpful sometimes to have a little bit more black you can go to. So there's the black color there. Now there's a couple of things I've not mentioned about the principal BSDF. We've just been looking at the color so far. The other areas that are really useful to look at, I just bring the shader editor out so you can see them all there. The metallic, I can bring this all the way up to one and that is now a metal object. You notice this more when you bring down the roughness so it's really shiny and you can see the influence there and it looks like a black metal now. Generally speaking, objects are either metallic or not. So this is usually one or zero, but you can get a bit of stylization by going in between. I don't really want our character to be metallic, but you might want to change the roughness just for fun. The default is right in the center. So it's got a little bit of reflectivity, but not much. What's worth pointing out though, if I go to my render properties just here, we've currently got EV as our render engine. It's a really good idea to turn on the ray trace option here because that gives you much more realistic reflections and it gives you these nice shadows in the crevices. That's called ambient occlusion. You'll notice as well that I've now got a few reflections in my object, especially if I put the roughness right up, you'll actually see a bit of the reflection of things like the floor just there. But I'll put that back to where it was in the middle there. But turning the ray trace on in EV will certainly help EV as a render engine look a little bit more realistic. And what I should say as well is that material preview mode always uses EV the render engine, whereas rendered view will use EV if it's selected as the render engine. But if you choose cycles, you can see there's cycles being used there. Remember, I can speed this up with changing my device to the GPU and turning on the denoise. So that's the cycles render and that's using the light in the scene as our main light. Whereas my material preview mode, that's using EV and using the background as my main light. So a couple of differences there. So let's add this material to the rest of our character. So I want to select my entire monster. That's a little bit awkward. I can't box select very easily. So I'll go across to the outliner. I'll minimize the old man, right click on the monster and select objects. Now I must've had my monster collection still selected when I added these objects. So let's just quickly select those and make sure they're in the street collection. So M to move to collection and choose street. And now if I press Alt A to deselect all, I'll zoom in a bit, right click on the monster and select objects. Now at the moment, the active object is actually the torso there, which is what I want because that's what I added my material to. But you can always just press shift and left click to change the active object. Notice what happens when I go back to the torso, my material appears. So I can now press control L to link materials. And now they've all got the same material. So control L link materials. Remember that's under the object menu just here, link and there's link materials just there. So quickly catch up with me, adding your materials to your monster character. Okay, so there's two more things I need to show you. Let's add a new material to the eyes. So I've selected the eyes there. To create a new material, I can close this one down and create a new one, or I can just come to this icon just here, new material. When you use that icon, it bases it on the old one. So it's called black 001 and has the same attributes as the old one. I'll rename this red eyes. And it doesn't matter about the base color because what I'm going to do is go down to the emission option here. So I'll open up that dialog box. I'll change the color to a red color. So bring that down to the reds there. And then I'll change the strength and put that up to something like 20 and see what that looks like. So at the moment, 
it doesn't look great. I'll just click away so you can see the results of that. It kind of turns a white color, the more powerful it is. So if I turn it down to let's say five, they'd actually look more red, but then we get less emission from them. I find the best way is actually to add a red light in front of your emission objects because it generally looks a little bit nicer, especially with these stylized scenes like this. So we'll add that later on. But for now, catch up with me and add an emission material like this to your eyes. Okay, so there's one more area that we need to consider when texturing. My light just here, I'll select that and add a new material. So new material, and I'll just call this lamp post, and we'll change that to some sort of gray color somewhere around here. And that's fine, we'll keep the same roughness. It could be concrete, it could be metal, it doesn't matter too much. The important bit though is the underside of the lamp. We want that to be nice and bright, like an emission. So if I go into edit mode and choose that face just there, I'll zoom in with period key so you can see that face. It'd be a good idea to inset it. So I to inset, so we've actually got this area here as the light. And now we need to give this a new material, but at the moment it's attached to the lamp post. Well, I could separate this face out, but you can give two materials to one object. That's in the material slots just here. So if I open the material slots, I can add a new slot and you can see it's got a blank material slot just there and I can actually assign this blank material slot to this face so whatever face you have selected and you press assign that assigns this material slot which has nothing in it at the moment to that face if I just come out of edit mode for a moment you can see it's got a white material so it's a default material because there's nothing in that slot so let's go back to slot 2 make sure it's selected here and then add a new material to it just there and I'll call this lamp emission go down to the emission properties change this to a slightly yellowy color and turn the strength up maybe to something like 7 or so I'll maybe give it a little bit more yellow as well, somewhere around there. So you can see that because I've got two slots, the lamp post there and the lamp emission, and I've assigned that face to the lamp emission, we've now got two materials on this object. Notice though, I haven't got my assign options just here. That's because I'm not in edit mode. If I go to edit mode, then to the slots, you can see that I can now assign faces to a particular slot. Also, if I click on the lamp post just here, you can see the lamp post material just there and the material changes. I can also, under the slots, select those faces or deselect those faces, which can be quite helpful. Okay, so that's how we can add two materials to an object. So lastly then, you should be able to now add the rest of the materials to your different objects. You might want to challenge yourself to do that now, and I'll just quickly speed the footage up of me doing that. I might make the street a little bit rougher so it's not too reflective. It's worth noting that the man's body just here, I created that with the default cube. So it started with a material that we can just see there. So its name is just material. And that might be linked to some of the other objects. So if I click on some of the other objects, you can see they've also got that material. So if I make any changes in here, it will update on all the other ones as well. So just be aware of that. I'll start with the middle and just call this blue and make their jumper blue. Now their trousers are want a different color, or pants you might say in America. So I can just close this one down or create a new one here. This time I'll close it down and create a new one and I'll change those to a brownie color like this. And I'll rename it as well, brown. So just be aware of that if you need to change some of these materials. I'll continue and speed everything up. Remember you can choose a material that you've already got in the drop down just here. I'll just edit the pupils very slightly and make them a little bit bigger. And at any point you can just edit your colors as you see fit whilst you're working through. The torch will need two material slots. So new material, torch body, and I'll make this a fairly dark color. And then into edit mode, select the front face, add a new material slot. So add a slot just here and assign that. It turns white because there's no material in that slot yet. So new material, torch emission. And I just go to the emission slot here, change the color to a nice yellowy color and give it a strength of five. And we've texted our entire scene. We just need to set up the lights in the next episode. So hopefully you got an okay with all of that. As always, do check out the links in the description for any updates and links to the wonderful playlists and courses I have on offer. If you've got any questions, then do comment below and remember to save your work ready for next time.